going on, Jerome's. We're getting down to the nitty-gritty in terms of the NFL draft coming up on Thursday. Our guy Chad Reuter, NFL.com draft analyst, uh, always does a seven-round mock draft right before uh, the draft, and things got going, man. The Vikings trade down in this one. Uh, let's see and recap who the Vikings get in Chad's 2022 mock draft. So going up at the top, zooming in and enhancing. Uh, one, Hutchinson. Two, Kenny Pickett. Wow, that would absolutely rock the boat and completely shock everyone. Him going before Willis, Kenny Pickett going top two. Let's go, man. Three, Sauce Gardner. Four, uh, Travon Walker falls to the Jets. Five, Ikki Kwanu to the Giants. And then they uh, go back to back with Thibodeau uh, in both trenches. The Panthers at six. Now, they probably would be bummed that Pickett goes uh, so early, but Evan Neal shores up the offensive line. Uh, eight, Malik Willis going to the Falcons. Ooh, 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 ooh. Grooming him to be the future franchise quarterback. Arthur Smith, uh, Kinsipia Mariota. Nine, Jermaine Johnson, the second, uh, coming out of Florida State. He goes uh, 10, the uh, Garrett Wilson G-Dub going to the Jets, as well as Kyle Hamilton at, at 11 going to the Commies. Now, the Vikings trade down with the, with the stupid Steelers. And they come up for Matt Corral. So third quarterback off the board. Now, it's interesting because the Vikings certainly could and should stick and pick here and take Stingley. Uh, and also, uh, there isn't any other picks in this draft uh, that, that I saw. So this is obviously for future picks. Probably a future first and some change. Maybe a future first and a third. Uh, but, I mean, I, I would just stick and take Stingley. Uh, I would at this point, but uh, it's Chad's mock. Charles Cross also on board. He goes to the Texans. Stingley goes to the Ravens, which sucks. Absolutely sucks. Uh, 15, Jordan Davis to the Eagles, as well as Jamison Williams. Ooh, the luxury of having two first-round picks going to, to Philly as well. Desmond Ritter goes to the Saints at 16, so four quarterbacks off the board in, in short order. 17, Drake London. I mean, I mean, why? Why Drake London when you have Mike Williams? Uh, their Spider-Man pointing meme. Uh, Devin Lloyd uh, goes to the Saints, new leader on defense there. Vikings at 20 uh, still get a great cornerback in Andrew Booth Jr. Uh, here's what they said. Uh, resigning Patrick Peterson was a wise move, but the Vikings must still add youth to the secondary. Booth's a physical player who has been unable to fully show off his athleticism uh, during the pre-draft process due to injuries. NFL offenses will see in it soon enough. However, yeah, Booth has length, has prototypical everything, and he certainly can get after. I think that he would walk in to be a starter opposite of Patrick Peterson. Cameron Dancer is just going to have to work his way in. Booth is a, is a fantastic player. Getting him a 20 would be value, plus you're getting a future first and a third. But it's really hard to walk away from Stingley at 12, man. I, I, I would be shocked if Stingley gets out of the top nine at this point. Uh, pending, blah, 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 blah. All right, so focusing on the Vikings picks. Round two. All right, so Linderbaum makes it out of the first round. Wow, I would maneuver and muscle for rank and go get him, man. Uh, and then uh, all these video players just keep popping up. Uh, so the Vikings, Traylon falls to the Bears. N'Kobe Dean goes to the Lions. That stinks. Tyler Smith, uh, Raymond, Drake Jackson, Logan Hall. So the Vikings pick up Lewis Seen, uh, the racked up and jacked up safety out of Georgia. I think this is a fantastic pick. I think that he would be the heir apparent for uh, Harrison Smith. I think that there's ways that you can have Harrison and Bynum and Seen on the field at the same time. I, I think Seen may be the most underrated player on that Georgia defense and the Vikings getting him at 46 uh, when I think that he is late first round uh, 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 talent uh, is just fantastic value uh, for them. Into the third. So Leo Chenal lasts until 65. John Michi the third. Pride of Canada lasts to 66. Him and uh, Amandra St. Brown are going to be a problem. Problem. Uh, so Vikings, Okanar goes. Tariq Woolen goes. CTB goes. Carson Strong goes to the Colts. That's, I think it's a popular uh, pick. Troy Anderson. Ow. Oh. Goes 75. So the Vikings pick up Jelani Woods, uh, physical freak tight end out of Virginia. Now, I think that he could be a second-round pick, uh, but the Vikings snagging him in the third round I think is great value. Now, does need to work on uh, being a hands catcher a, a little bit, but the physical tools you can't deny. Uh, former college quarterback at uh, Oklahoma State, uh, I believe. But the Vikings, yeah, tight end is a little bit more of a position of need than people would think. So getting uh, Woods in the third makes sense so you got corner you got safety you got tight end you already checked off three boxes now wide receiver o-line yeah, let's take a look so no pick in the fourth round so we're on to the fifth uh let's see here kyle phillips goes alex wright spencer buford ah yeah 
Uh, so 156, Vikings uh, picking up Jesse Lucada, uh, who is a little bit of an underrated edge rusher coming out of Penn State. Uh, no, he, he doesn't have the hype of a Nodafe away or Ebiquete coming in uh, in this year's class, but I think that he is a rock-solid uh, potential edge rusher uh, for the Vikings. Uh, do, do like that selection overall. And then into the six. So now we can have some fun because we got three picks here. Uh, six, six, six. Ooh. Ooh, not so much. 184, Romeo Dubes coming out of, of Nevada. Now, he was a favorite target of Carson Strong. Uh, he's got great size. I think he's got great physical ability. Uh, also, I think that he has the traits to be able to contribute on special teams right away, working his way up, uh, and then potentially working his way into the wide receiver you know, four type role. Uh, maybe even more than that. We'll see. Back-to-back six-round picks. Uh, Jack Sanborn. So, Leo Chenal gets all the hype. Sanborn... I mean, you probably could have gotten Sanborn as a UDFA, taking him here here in the six. He does remind me a lot of Tough Borland. Like physically, uh, he he's fine. Uh, he is more of a meat potatoes, grinded out uh, traditional uh, linebacker. He does have a good nose for the football. Getting him in the sixth round, okay. Uh, One ninety two, Donovan West. Now West reminds me very much of Nick Harris uh, when he was coming out of Washington a couple years ago. Went to the Browns as a fifth or sixth round pick. Uh, a little bit undersized, but great in and outside zone. Could play some guard as well. Now Nick Harris is en route to be the Brown starting center. Uh, Donovan West could follow that, that similar path. Ooh, Donovan West, sixth round pick. John Sullivan one time. There you go. Uh, then uh, wrapping up with the seventh round pick, 250 overall. 250 for the Lochtus Monster. Uh, we has. Uh, Jean DeLance coming out of Florida. And now he was a three-year starter at right tackle. I think that he could kick inside. I think he's got enough physical tools where he could be a decent uh, outside zone guy in terms of being a guard, uh, as well as you know he gets thrown into the mix. Probably you know practice squad guy for the first couple of years. Maybe he rises up. Maybe he becomes a little bit more uh, than that. So recapping Chad, Chad's mock draft. So the Vikings uh, they traded down for the Steelers. They didn't talk about trade compensation, but I'm guessing it's a future first and a third at least minimum, but still getting Booth Jr. at 20. Uh, he comes in as your starting uh, cornerback. I think that that would be great. Lewis Seen is going to be the heir for Harrison Smith, getting him at 46. Fantastic value. Jelani Woods is definitely one of the big upside guys in this draft. Uh, tight end is a position need for the Vikings. Irv is heading to the final year of his rookie deal. Woods has a size and ability, and he, he can certainly be uh, a difference maker uh, in the Vikings offense. Jesse Lucata coming in from uh, Penn State. I uh, saw a potential on the edge. Edge. Romeo Dubes, who I, I like a lot as a six-round pick coming out of Nevada. Jack Sanborn uh, could be a special teamer, uh, could be a back-end-of-the-roster guy. Donovan West uh, has some potential. Uh, I think that they could groom him for the next couple years. Maybe he works his way into the starting five. We, sh- we shall see. And John DeLance uh, is going to be very nice uh, depth along the offensive line as well. So basically... You know, they, they checked all the boxes in terms of need. They got the corner, safety, tight end, edge rusher, wide receiver, uh, linebacker, as well as a couple offensive linemen. So, you know, maybe we don't like those positions addressed in that order, but I think the top end of this draft is a lot of fun. And also you get a future first and a probably a future third from the Steelers who, I mean, the Steelers could be ass. Thank you next season. So that could be a, a very valuable first round pick. Uh, but that's it. Let's take a look at NFL.com's draft analyst Chad Reuter, seven-round mock draft. What are your thoughts on our thoughts and his thoughts? Let us know in the comments section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Most important work, put a little something in the Venmo. But until next time, Skull, production value.